Hello, this is George Demery, and here we are again for another episode of Your Money Matters. Think about money. Think about decisions that people make. And most every decision, not every decision, but most every decision that we make, it's got a dollar sign attached. Most decisions that the federal government makes, trust me, has a dollar sign attached. You know, we just got, took our last troops out of Afghanistan. But when you think back on it 20 years ago, why did we go there in the first place? Now, what happened in 9-11 was one of the biggest tragedies in our country's history. You know, when we think about Remember, most everything that we do and most everything that country does has a dollar sign attached. It just has a dollar sign attached. And when I think of just recently, they showed, they showed the replays of what happened during 9-11. One of the biggest tragedies, one of the biggest devastating tragedies in our country's history so just watching it again brought tears to my eyes, thinking, oh my, all those fellow Americans who passed away. But, you know, I was, but the, the aftermath of that, we decided to go into a country that at the time, many of us believe had nothing to do with what happened in 9-11. Now, when that decision was made, somebody made a ton of money on that. Those wars that we had have cost us over years almost two trillion dollars. So trust me, a lot of people in this country got rich because of, because of what happened over there. Now, so it's important for me to share with you all of as many financial principles as I can share with you. Now, I am professionally not a financial expert, just not. But I do have a ton of years of wisdom. I've made just enough mistakes to be dangerous. I've made a few very good decisions as, a, as it relates to my money, always saved, always saved. And I do as much research as I can so I can help you in, in making great financial decisions. The, the problems that I had and the mistakes that I had, trust me, my children won't have because their fathers already made them. And I'm helping to set a legacy. So I'm hoping that what I share with you will also help you. So let's talk about this again. Let's talk about money. Last week we talked about what money does and what it won't do. And the last thing we said during last week's show is that money will not make you happy. Now, the things that you can do with money will help you to live a better lifestyle, but it won't be money that makes you happy. Money will just make you more of what you already are. Again, just to repeat, if you're a happy person by nature, money will make you happier. If you're a mean person by nature, money will just make you a mean person with more money. Let money work for you. Rich people let money work for them. They just do, you know. You need to have multiple streams of income. You need to look for different ways of making money. 
One of the reasons that, uh, remember, we have five pillars as it relates to what Money Matters is standing on. And one of those is looking for employment and education opportunities. Because I want to help, if nothing else, to motivate you to look for something else that will help you to reach your financial goals. If what you're doing today is not getting you there, there are opportunities out there if you look for them. Young people, when you are deciding on, on a career, there are tons out there, but set a goal. I have a, I have a little brother with big brother, big sister. I told him, he's, he's coming, getting out of high school. I said, look, either, either go to college. Now, I believe in college. I really do. But I said, go to college with an intent. Know what you want to do. He wasn't sure. But I also believe that if you want a college degree and you happen to not be 100% sure of what you want to do, then go to a smaller college. Go spend the first two years taking some of the required things till you find out what you really want to get done. Or number two, learn a trade. Learn tons of trades that make you a lot of money. Tons of them. We talked about electricians, plumbers. Uh, I've said this a number of times. Uh, elevator repair people make eighty thousand dollars a year. Who knew that? You know. So when you have, when you learn a skill, I was sharing this with a person the other day. Remember what your value is. Let me tell you what your value is. Your value in what you get paid many times, young people, is dependent on the need for what you do. Who doesn't need an electrician sometimes? Who doesn't need a plumber sometimes? Heck, at St. Stephen Baptist Church, the HVAC guy, we need him all the time. I mean, the need for what you do, number one. Number two, how well you do it, if there's a need and you're the very best at it, guess what? You can, you, you, you can ask for more money. You can. And the difficulty, the difficulty to replace you, when you do something really well, there's a big need for it, and you're hard to replace, trust me, you can make some money on that. Now. Tell you what, I'm going, to, I'm going to quote one of the richest men in, 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 in the world, really, definitely in the American world, and that's Warren Buffett. And we're going to spend a little time on investments, okay? Just a little time on investments. Six rules of investing. Now, again, my daughter is looking for ways of investing money. You don't have to make a lot of money to invest money. You don't. You have to have some discipline. Remember, you need to automate your, your savings where X amount of money goes into a savings account every paycheck. And then you will learn to live off the balance. It says, cash is, <laughs> now this is from Warren Buffett, says cash is not a great investment, it loses value. That's what we talked about last week about how just sitting cash, and if you don't invest cash, you're not making any money with cash. And the cash that you have today will not have the same value as that cash 10 years from now. Remember, you know, 50 years ago, if you made $10,000 a year, you made a lot of money. Now if you make $10,000 a year, you, you, you can't really make it. So, so remember that. Invest in productive assets. Well, when you decide that you're going to invest, what assets are productive? Things that 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 in that has some future. I was listening to a radio program just this week at Exxon WLOU. It was a futurist that was on there. I thought it found it very interesting. Look for information. Have an insatiable appetite for information. 
There's nothing like it. Don't just listen to folks. Find out for yourself. What's producing? Where's their long-term need? What problems does it solve? Those are the things you look at. Stay in the circle of, of, of your competency. Understand, stay, stay with what you know or, or get around people who can help you with things that you don't know, all right? Evaluate companies first. Are they profitable? Do they have cash? Are they over leveraged? According to Warren Buffett, play big when you can, all right? And, and, and finally, and this is, I think, I don't think anything is more important than number six. Invest in yourself. In so many ways, we talk about that all the time. Everything that we're doing now is talking about, we're talking about self-investment. We talk about discipline. We're talking about investing in yourself. You know, I, I, I told the story a, a while back, uh, an, another Reverend Cosby story, is when he said he, he, he ran into a guy, this is a number of years ago, guy's 34 years old. And, um, and he was, was very unhappy with what he was doing. And, 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 and Rev said, well, hey, man, I'll help you. Rev willing to help. Come to Simmons. You know, let's work on getting your degree. And the guy looks at, looks at Rev and says, well, it's going to take me four years. I'll be 39. And Rev's response was, you're going to be 39 anyway. So would you, be 30, would you rather be 39 with a degree or 39 in the same position you're in today? Invest in yourself. Read. Have an insatiable appetite for information. Don't let people tell you things. It is, it is important. It's only three things I'm sure of. Then I'm, there's some other things, but for the most part, for the most part, there's three things in life that I cannot control no matter what. One is I believe there is God. I believe in providence. I believe I'm here for a reason. When you had to be God, it's the only reason I could be sitting in front of you today. If someone said uh, two years ago I'd be doing what I'm doing today, I wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, I wouldn't believe it. Had to be God. Number two is one day I'm going to lead this earth. We all are. We all got an appointment out of here. We don't know when. Hopefully it's years from now, but we do have an appointment. And number three, on something that you can't change, that you can't do anything about, and that's change. Things are going to change. Now, are, now it's going to change with your help or without your help. Listen to me, young people or old people. It is going to change with your help or without your help. Be a change agent. You take control of change. Give yourself options. In our last program, we talked about having options. And what options really mean is power. When you have options, you have power. When you have options on where to go get your money, when you're ready to buy a car, all right, you have power. That way you, you can negotiate. Well, I'm not going to pay 4% for this one. I can go to the bank down the street and get 2.5%. That's because you have options in paying your bills on time, good credit rating, understanding how your money works, gives you power. Options give you power. Invest in yourself. Take the high road because, <laughs> he, he, Warren Buffett also says this, take the high road because it's, it's less crowded. You know, how do you increase stuff? Warren Buffett's top 10 rules of success. That's the reason I chose Warren Buffett. You know, why not get information from someone who's made a lot of money and maybe we can take some of these principles and, and help you to come up with a plan to get you, maybe not Warren Buffett money, who's gonna do that? But at least put you in a position where you want to be and you're going to live a very productive life. He says, number one, find a passion. Find a passion. What you passionate about? 
you know, I think uh, about, I don't know, a month or two ago, we, we had a program. We said, well, maybe even if it's not a passion, find something that you just like doing, even if it happens to not be a passion. If you like doing it and you can make money at it, then guess what? It's not really like work. I'll tell you what, I really like working at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Because of that, it's not really like work. I love the people, love my pastor. Love everything about, love the community, love where we're setting in an urban setting and that we can help our people to grow. I truly want to help you. If you have a passion for things, you do things well. Number two, there is nothing more important than integrity. There's no, young people, hear me, young, old people. There is nothing more important than integrity. There is nothing more important than being a person of your word. If you tell a person, if you do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it on that day, that's the difference between a 750 credit rating and a 550 credit rating. All right? And the only person you're hurting is yourself. Don't care about what people think. Now, that's also big for young folks. Don't care. If you know it's the right thing to do, do the right thing. Spike Lee, do the right thing, all right? For you, your whole ones, you may not know what I mean by that. For you young people, but do the right thing. Don't be caught up with what people think about you. You do... You set yourself apart. I, re I remember years ago, and I always talk about my children, and I'm, I'm not going to stop, so I'm going to continue to do it. My daughter was a middle school student down here at Mazik, and there were people there that were making fun of her because of what she was doing in school and how she talked. Well, now, now, she's, now she's a medical doctor, and those people will be working for her one day. So don't be afraid and don't care about what people think. Again, this is the third time this has popped up. Read, 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 read. I quote books all the time. It's nothing like re-educating yourself all the time. It's important. It's important. You go in my house and things that I'm interested in, Sales, marketing, leadership, personal growth, just those are things that I've, I've found to be interesting. Over the last couple of years, money and how people make money and what to do as it relates to money. Have a margin of safety where you, where you draw the line. I mean, where will you draw the line? I'll, do, I'll risk this, but I won't risk that. All right? Have, understand your competitive advantage. When I read that, I said, usually when people are talking about a competitive advantage, they're talking about a business. What is a business's competitive advantage? What does a business do better than the competition, all right? But I'm looking at this from a personal perspective. What is your competitive? Young people, what do you do well? I mean, what do you do well? What do you, know your strengths. Know your weaknesses. What special skills do you have? Are you willing to develop a new skill that gives you a competitive advantage? Now, I got a good friend, a frat brother, you know, I'm not going to throw its name. Well, I'm Steve Dunn, that's his name. All right? I did it, all right? I'm telling you, electrician can't get out of the way of the business because he's really good at it. It's his com he, 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 it is his competitive advantage. Inter interpersonal skills. How do you deal with people? has a lot to do with your emotional intelligence. As an employer, let me tell you something about employers, young people. 
An employer would, would much rather hire a person that's high in e emotional intelligence and good at IQ, I mean, you know, a good, strong B student, rather than someone who is an A student, four-point average, but low in emotional intelligence. <laughs> Having interpersonal skills will make you or break you. Being able to understand who you are, the people you're around, and how to read people, how to talk to people. Communication skills. How do you talk? How do you communicate? Right? Be willing to, don't be, don't be shy. Ask. Uh, uh, an, another quote I've heard many, many times, a closed mouth don't get fed. Ask questions. Do you know how many young people have, an, have opportunities, whether it be in high school, in college, but yet won't go ask questions? If you don't know, ask your question. Let me share this with you. <clears throat> if you're not doing well in a class, go talk to your teacher. Develop a relationship with her. I, I can give you uh, uh, another one of my children, all right? on struggling to get in a class, in a class, trying to get out of college, but, it, but I'm, I'm teaching him. I'm, I'm teaching him what to do. And I'm teaching you like I'm teaching him. I said, go and talk to the teacher. Tell her what you're trying to do. He developed a relationship with this lady. And because of this, at the end of the day, I won't tell you the whole story because it's a marvelous story. But at the end of the day, she helped to put him in a position where he passed a class that was difficult for him, and now he's a college graduate doing everything he wants to do, most of everything he wants to do. That's communication skills. That's understanding them. And be, and, and be willing, a lot of people won't do this, but all this has to do with your money. Be willing to exceed expectation. Do you know how many people exceed expectation? What? Count them on one hand. How many people, if they said they're going to show up at 3, showed up at 250? But, show, but how many times have I had a meeting that started at 4 and people show up at 415? Happens all the time. Unless, if, 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 when I was at the radio station, I used to lock the door. But when you're on Zoom, you can't lock a door. I guess you could, but I don't, you know. Exceeding expectation. Giving people more than they expect. And watch this trick. It's not this more young people or old people. It's that more. Consistent, consistently. If you give people a little more than they expect, they will come back and do business with you. What happens when that waitress gave you just a little more than you expected? What is the likelihood that you will come back? Just a, a lot of this, if you really think about it, is common sense. And this is from Warren Buffett on what makes you successful. Always be competing. Always be competing. Compete with yourself. Don't compete with people to hurt people. But always look for ways of getting better. Always getting ways of, of getting better. Compete, compete. Model your success. Emulate successful people. It's one of the reasons I'm using Warren Buffett. You want to em emulate successful people. Well, what did he do? How did he invest his money? I mean, there, we're gonna have a program about investing money, and I'm gonna have an investor that's much better than me. Because there's so many ways that you can invest your money. I mean, it's just so many ways. Um, I, I mean, just, just so many. I, I told my, my daughter this morning, I said, make sure you buy Roth, but I'm not going to get into that. It's just so many things you can do. Emulate successful people. Look for wisdom. <clears throat> this was number 10. He says, give unconditional love. Wow. It came from a very rich guy, unconditional love. What does that mean? You know, what does it mean to give 
unconditional love. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? That's the kind of love you get from your mama, huh? That's the kind of love you give your children. Give unconditional love, you know? Talked about this in investing in yourself. He used this as example, which I thought was pretty was pretty neat, family. He said, if you could only buy one car in a lifetime, how well would you take care of it? Wow. If you could only buy one car in a lifetime, how well would you take care of it, okay? Well, you only have one mind and one body. Nurture yourself your entire life. That means think critically. It means read. It means have integrity. It means try your best to eat right. That's, that's for me, all right? Do whatever you need to do to help yourself. And then finally, finally, when you make it and you, you, you got to where you want to get to, don't forget how you got there. Always be willing to reach back, grab somebody behind you, and bring them up with you. Because there's always more power in two and three and four than it is with one. Well, that's our program today. I've enjoyed it today as much as any I've ever done. Because I'm thinking I've given you information that no matter how old you are, you can use for a lifetime. And remember, it money matters, as always, we try to help you, and God loves you, and so do we.